Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 8, Video 3 on Motions Prediction using Seakeeper. We've seen the basic parameters that we need to enter into the program. Now let's take a look at how we do that in practice. We start out in the Seakeeper program and like the other analysis programs, we work our way through the analysis menu from top to bottom to enter the required data. We start out by measuring the hull that we've loaded in from MaxSurf. We can define the number of max map sections, typically between 20 and 40, and we choose the number of mapping terms to calculate the conformal mapping approximation to the actual sectional shape. If we calculate those sections, we can display the original sections and the map sections calculated. We can see that there's a bit of a discrepancy between the two. If we want to improve the accuracy of the section mapping, we can increase the number of terms that we use. So if we increase the number of mapping terms, we can get a more accurate fit. But you should be sure to always check the fitted sectional shape. From there, the next step is to choose the type of vessel. So in this case, we either choose a catamaran with its demi-hull spacing or a monohull. And following that, the mass distribution. Recall that we define the mass distribution in terms of the pitch and roll gyre radii as a percentage of the length and beam respectively. So we've got our pitch gyre radius is 25% of the length and our roll gyre radius, so I'm going to have 38% of the beam. And the last part of the mass distribution is the vertical center of gravity. It's important that you enter that accurately. You must have a positive GM so that the model is stable and uh, VCG does have a big effect on motion, so make sure you get that VCG definition correct. From there, the damping factors, uh, two components. For the heave and pitch, you'll usually just want to use the calculated values for damping for heave and pitch as calculated by Seakeeper, but if you want to add any additional damping, this is where you enter it as a factor of the velocity. For roll, we enter in a coefficient that's the total roll damping due to viscous effects that's typically in the range of 0.05 to 0.2 and so I'm going to use the default value here. In the advanced seminar next month we'll see how we can calculate that more accurately. And then the damping factors are entered so we just need to enter environment and frequency range. We don't usually have to change those. The environment is just around water density, the frequency range, the range of C spectral frequencies we need to consider. And so the final data entry is just the method of calculation uh, within different parts of the analysis. If we have an immersed transom, then we can choose the option to consider transom terms for corrections associated with the low pressure zone associated with the immersed transom. For our added resistance calculations due to motions, we've got a couple of different methods there. The Salveson method, which is the sort of general widely applicable method, or the Goritzmer and Berkelman method for cargo ships. And finally, if we're just looking at heb seas, then we can use the head seas approximation for calculating our wave forces. If we're also looking at oblique seas, we should use the arbitrary wave heading. So that's our overall inputs relating to analysis. The next step is the specific details of the design and the uh, performance. So if we go to the inputs window, we have a range of different tabs in here. The first tab is our locations tab. So we can define a number of remote locations on the vessel. And these are places on the vessel where we want to compute the details of the motion. So for each of those locations, for example, the bridge or an accommodation space or the propeller, we define the longitudinal, transverse, and vertical locations of that location. As a convenience, Seakeeper also shows the distance from the center of gravity. As we move across, we can see that for each of these remote locations, we can also define friction coefficients if we want to calculate motion-induced interruptions. And if we want to calculate motion sickness incidence, we can also define an exposure time. So we can define an exposure time in uh, minutes uh, for the bridge and then for an accommodation space we might uh, define a much longer exposure time, perhaps eight hours or something like that. So the next tab is our speeds tab and in the speeds tab we of course define a range of speeds just uh, entering in the speed in knots. If we want to add or 
delete items from any of these tables, we can just use the commands from the edit menu. Notice that we have the checkboxes on the right hand side, so we can define a whole range of speeds or other data, but then just turn on or off the items we actually want to analyze on the next calculation cycle. The headings tab is the next one, and we can define the headings. Remember that following seas are at zero degrees, head seas are at 180 degrees, and a range of heading angles in between. And then finally, the sea state itself. You can see here I've defined a range of sea states using the standard terminology. And for a sea state, we define the type of sea spectra that we want to use. So Seakeeper supports ITTC, Britt Schneider, John Swap, DNV, and Pearson Moskowitz spectra. And for each of these spectra, we need different input parameters, whether it be the characteristic wave height or the period or so on. As we choose each of those items, the required data entry will be shown in black and the computed values that are calculated automatically by Seakeeper will be shown in gray. So we can pick those methods and wave heights and periods within this table. So that finishes the setup ready for analysis. In the next video, we'll see how we run the analysis and interpret the results. Thank you for watching.